Earlier this week, we were fortunate enough to have the charity Mind with us to speak to Aston Villa legend Lee Hendry about the mental health issues he's encountered. Now, stats show that men account for three out of four suicides, and this is the biggest cause of death for men under 35 in the UK. Mind can provide advice for both men and women, empowering anyone experiencing a mental health problem. If you or someone you know needs support, please visit mind.org.uk. Anyway, let's see what Lee had to say. Hello, Lee. Good morning. Uh, thank you for taking the time to be part of Screwfix Live today and taking the time to talk to me. Uh, just so that people know, I'm from uh, Mind. I'm actually from Mind in Somerset, but we're a national charity which supports uh, people's mental health, good mental health, and raises awareness about the issues of mental health nationally. I'm particularly pleased to be working with Screwfix, who are champions of mental health, particularly men's mental health who still find it more difficult to open up about their own mental health than, than women. That still seems to be a fact of life. And Lee, you've, you've been very open about your own struggles with mental health over the last few years. Most recently, I read in a, a, an interview that you did with The Guardian newspaper. And I just wondered when you were first aware that, that, that you had an issue with your own mental health, and what prompted you to take action? What prompted you to take responsibility? Um, I mean, when I first sort of had the, the, that feeling that, I, you know, I was feeling oh, very down on myself, um, very low, I think it was coming towards the back end of sort of my football career, really. Um, and just not knowing where or whereabouts I was going to go next. Um, I had a few issues at the similar sort of time, which were what certainly didn't help the the, the, the facts of how I, how I felt um just through the the simple fact that it was I was going through a divorce uh, quite a hefty divorce um I was coming to the end of my football career and I was struggling with injuries and I just had a whole host of stuff that sort of mounted on top of me um that really got me into a, a, a bit of a sorry state that you know I, I couldn't actually go and speak to someone because I didn't actually know what what it was all about really I mean you, you, I think you always read and you see people talking about depression and um you know it it wasn't as big as what it is now and people are actually starting to realize that you know people are depressed and they do go through really tough times um so at, at my at my time it was it was really keeping a lot to myself and, and not actually speaking to anyone about my problems um you know, I went through a bankruptcy at the same sort of time. I had, I had like I said, there was a, a handful of stuff that sort of plowed down me on, on top of me all at once. And, you know, I mean, to sit here and actually tell the story that I'm, I'm you know, that I can and help others, hopefully, that, you know, I'm, I'm quite pleased that, that I've got through that stage because it was such a difficult time to, to actually grasp it and to realise what I was going through. You know, I was... I was playing professional football, which was a dream come true for me. Um, and obviously to see it all come crashing down and all the hard work I'd put into to, to being a footballer and, and and trying to invest money into to properties and to have all that taken away after all that hard work was, it was demoralising. It was hard to take. It was a number of things, again, that, you know, as a man, you're quite proud. I've always looked after my family, you see, so I've, you know, my mum's house got repossessed. My house got repossessed. It was just, it was just a, such a difficult time where I, I had no other alternative to, to turn away and, and try and shut everything out, really. Okay, so that expression "man up" that we hear so often, don't we? That that's, <laughs> you know, it's difficult to accept that things might not be going quite as well for you as as you had hoped. And you know, we can only thank you for 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 sharing your experience now. So, so what steps did you actually take, Lee, when when you knew that things needed to improve? Did you did you visit your GP, for example? What 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 did you do? What got you on that road to recovery? However small those steps might be. Um, it, it was a long, it was a long road to, to to get into that stage because, you know, I think I'm, I think I'll speak for all men and well, not just men, um, you know, women, but you know, uh, men predominantly are quite proud in what they do. You know, they 
I've always been the breadwinner and I've always been one that's tried to be kind to my family if I've always I've always looked after people. Um so my, my my small steps were that I actually went to the doctors to see someone um originally and they said straight away that you know I was I was suffering bad depression um which was was, was difficult but I mean, I've got to, I've got to state before I actually went to the doctors, I actually tried to take my own life, which made me lead to going to the doctors, um, which was fortunate that I could. Um, I'm not saying it helped me straight away because it didn't, because I, I just couldn't get my head around the fact that there was no way out of this situation. Um, and the small steps I took was slowly, well, given antidepressant, which I didn't really want to take. Um, because I felt that I could get through it myself, um, which I think a lot of people would say the same thing, um, because it's quite daunting when you're given antidepressants to try and cover a mask up a situation that's quite, well, if anything, it's, it's life-threatening, really. So, you know, I couldn't get my head around taking that, um, which eventually I did. Um, and then I was sent to, to, to go and see someone to speak about my issues, which when I actually turned up there, I was too embarrassed to actually go into to the private tuition that, that was, was booked for me, which I actually came back and told my family that I went in and it worked really well for me, which I was just blatantly lying, um, which I'm not proud of because, you know, they, everyone, every one of my family wanted to push me and help me to, to, to get better, really. So, you know, that was, that was a difficult s- stage for me. I came back and then, through the door saying that I didn't turn up for my appointment, which obviously I'd, I'd been caught red-handed that I hadn't gone in. Um, so then they took me themselves. And I, it, it was actually one of the big corners that made me turn because sitting down and speaking to someone neutral away from my family was really helpful. Um, it was upsetting. It was hard. It was, it was just a, a number of things that they helped me get off my chest and help me stand up and realize that, you know, lots of people do go through tough times. And sometimes we need to come away from our families who sometimes will tell you things you want to hear. Um, and, and obviously they don't know the ins and outs of being depressed. So just to actually see seeking advice from a professional was, was a massive, massive step for me. And the story you tell, Lee, is not is not an unusual one. That story of needed to rock bottom, the hit rock bottom before you realise you need to do something about it. The reluctance to take antidepressants um, because that feels like a big deal, doesn't it? But if we can think that if you've got a headache, you take a you know you take an aspirin for your headache. Yeah. So why not take something to support your mental health as well? And then also that that. Um, uh, that letting your pride down to actually go and talk to somebody about how you feel, but how uh, how good how good that is for you in in the long run to actually talk to somebody that's that's not that's uh, that's neutral. So so you said about your wife and family, and you've got a wife and young children at the moment. What yeah. role do they and perhaps your wider family and friends play in supporting you? So what what role did they play then, and what role do they play now? Um, I mean, back then, they. I think everyone was, uh, I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and lie about it. My, my wife ended up going through really bad anxiety, um, almost a stage of depression herself, just because of the, the scenes she see me in. The things I put my family through, you know, a, a number of times I try to take my own life, the, see, the situation that they see me in, you know, on a life support machine. So, they really are protective around me. They want to know where I'm going. They want to know what movements I'm doing. Um, you know, they're always constantly asking me how I'm feeling. They they kind of get an idea when I'm on a bit of a low because I sort of go missing and I go really quiet um, because I'm sort of a bubbly character. You know, I've always been life and soul of the party, but they kind of know when, when I'm having bad days and, uh, uh, and that's when it's it's great to have them around because, you know, having the children around, um, my wife, my family will always come over and see me, and it, and it gives me a bit more of a lift. Uh, it, it's it's just having people around who you can, I don't know, you can you can actually 
confined in a little bit more and, and tell them how you're feeling because making that big step of going to see someone that's sort of in the middle and then relating it to your family and, and having them around when you are feeling on a bit of a low and, you know, there's nothing better than, than seeing my little boys smiling, my girls smiling. It's, 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 it's great. So, you know, the, the, the them things that just remind you that, you know, you, you've got family around you that can protect you and help you and, and, and try and make you feel better. Um, and, and, and that's the thing that, 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 that they've helped me along the way is that, you know, the times where I, I did go through tough times is that, they were very protective about where I went and 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 tried to protect me in every single way. And and still now, um, obviously, my wife and kids and and family are exactly the same now. It, it hasn't just gone away from that initial time where we were going through such a bad period. It's still to this time when, obviously, it's nowhere near in comparison. Uh, but you know, they know when things are not great for me, and and it's great to have a conversation with dad or mom. Um, just about the way I feel because it gets a lot off my chest and it, it certainly does help. Um, and one of the big bits of advice we always give to people who are suffering from depression or any other mental illness is to make those connections. You know, when you can expand your friendship network, make the connections back with your family if that's at all possible because everybody needs a cheerleader. Everybody needs somebody on their yeah. side who's supporting them. And and children are a great leveller anyway, aren't they? So young children particularly yeah. are a great leveller. Um. So you said, and you've been quite open, that you still have relapses of depression because it doesn't just go away when you're in yeah. perhaps unable to get a book for a few days. So what do you do now, perhaps practically, but what do you tell yourself? What's the voice inside your head to stop you from relapsing back into those dark days, Lee? Um, it, it, again, when when I do have these sort of times and days is 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 predominantly when I'm not busy and I'm not working. And that's when I start to doubt myself and I start to think about lots more things. It, 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 you know, is my work going to come to an end? You know, how am I going to pay bills? How am I going to do this? And and that's when I, I, I kind of, I kind of have to prompt myself and train myself to get up out of bed. Uh, it's crazy because speaking to a well-known Vinnie Jones when I was away, he said to me, whenever you're feeling that down like that, get yourself up, make your bed. And it just makes you feel so much, but open the curtains. And, and I've been doing that a lot more and it's, and it's great to get advice off people who've been through similar or, or different situations and, and to try and use them sort of methods to see if it can get over. And it, and it does help. It really does. I, I can't sit here and lie. I've, when the times where I've sat in bed and it's gone a two hours down the line, I'm thinking, what what am I doing? I've got to get up and I've got to get myself motivated. And that is probably the hardest thing to do when you, when you feel that way because you just feel an hour goes by, another hour goes by. And before you know, you're sitting in there and it's, it's, it's late afternoon and I'm thinking I've been in bed all day because I feel so low on myself. So I'm not saying I don't do that still. I try and use these methods of getting up getting dressed, getting showered, sometimes going out and, and having a, a jog or a run round or playing a little bit of golf at times. So then things, when I haven't got nothing to do, I'm, are so key in my life at the moment because I feel if I don't get up and have them, then little things to go and do, I'd end up sitting in there and, and, and continuing being and feeling down on myself and, and, and doubting myself, which... Is, is very difficult to get your head around at times because like you said that voice in your head is saying get up and then it's like you know it, it's easier said than done but having things to do and having things planned I feel has really helped me get over them little situations that at time to time I do struggle with. Yeah so some small steps would you agree even those small steps of opening the curtains making the bed are hugely important and then move on yeah. to the next small step and then the next small step yeah that brilliantly you explain that so well and just finally for me what would your one piece of advice be for uh, those people who are watching who are concerned about their own mental well-being or perhaps that of somebody that they work with or are close to in their in their family what would your one bit of advice be 
I, I, I can't state enough that, you know, earlier earlier on in the conversation that we had is that, you know, we, 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 lots of us go through really tough situations, different situations. And, you know, but I, I, I do feel that if you can not bottle it up and, and not tuck it underneath the carpet and get yourself and be strong about it, it's easy saying that it's easy me sitting here saying that because it, it's taking small steps, but even having a conversation with someone that you feel comfortable with that might say to you to, to to just give you that little bit of a lift to go and speak to someone else that's that's worthy. But I feel going to speak to someone professional, going to see your doctor is certainly one thing that I would recommend without doubt because, listen, I've been embarrassed and felt rock bottom at times. But do you know what? When I've been and seen my doctor and when I've spoke to people, it makes me feel so much better because I know that I'm not just carrying that problem and that burden all around on my, on my own. People are there to help. And some people do get embarrassed about actually speaking about the situation. But I think speaking is absolutely massive in this situation because holding all problems inside, it, it doesn't help you. It just, it just builds up and builds up and then you, you're ready to explode. And I think if you can slowly break them methods down, break them situations down. Speaking is, is, is so key for me, I feel. That's brilliant, Lee. What a fantastically clear message. Hopefully that's the one thing that people will take away from them, them, them for themselves from watching this. So thank you so much, Lee, on behalf of Mind and on behalf of Screwfix. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you. Very thank much. you.